I saw you wear your hat in 1999. Can't really know what I'm thinking, you know, I kind of like it. And then, and then like 2003, you started to do one of these. This is probably the worst. This is the worst one. That's why they call me Mugatu. Run the intro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Son of Mike, back with another video today. We ripped that room apart. So we're waiting on equipment to come in, which is the topic of the day. I'm gonna tell you the absolute best equipment to get jacked, to get strong, to open a gym or a home gym. And maybe we'll dig into the topic. We missed the, the clickbait. I think Brandon Campbell called a bunch of people saying why they're training at home or they won't train at home. Alan and him did a little thing. How do I get involved? I wanna get involved, Alan. I wanna get involved, Mr. Diamond Campbell and the feuds and the questions ask me a question candido had one he yelled at alan or something i want to yell at somebody i want to have a very polarizing opinion that then causes clicks and reddit posts to then make all of you hate me even though you guys love those three guys i'll be the i'll be the bad guy we're gonna talk about equipment how to build a home gym best powerlifting equipment best equipment possible uh, and maybe go over a quick list of what we have for our gym not only for future members so you guys know what we'll have here but for all of you guys to kind of know my thought process on how to open a gym podcast room fulfillment room 3sb.co third street barbell on instagram follow the clothing's dropping trill soon very limited supply because we uh one are just testing the waters to see how much you guys rock with us and two everything's gonna be limited so uh forcing myself to be creative forcing you guys to pay attention. That's what it is. You know the teacher will like do something? Uh, I can't think if it was my school or if it's a normal thing, but is it like something like this or something? I think it was like this. And then, and then, and then everyone's like yelling and chatting, and then when you find out the teacher's doing that, you gotta do this too. And then eventually, it takes a while, because some of the kids are over in the corner yapping, and then eventually everyone's like, you know? So I've been in the industry a very long time, opened a gym in 2010. I worked a commercial gym from 2009 to about 2015. Obviously worked in the powerlifting world since about 2011, either assisting running companies, uh, running meets, competing in meets, coaching in meets. Uh, but before that, it was more strength and conditioning. I've got a lot of cool friends out there. Shout out to Ramsey and all these guys at the collegiate and professional level, highest end of sport um, that work with the top athletes in the world. And so I've been lucky enough to visit train with, train alongside, and train in person to some of the coolest facilities and smartest minds in the strength and conditioning, powerlifting, strongman, weightlifting world over the last 10 years. When you first think about like opening a gym yourself or starting a garage gym, you first have to take into mind what you use most when you're at a big gym, and then how creative you can get and how multi-use each individual tool is that you're gonna purchase, right? When you go to a big commercial gym, you have a, a five arm machines dumbbells, cables, barbells, it's easy to do anything you want. But chances are you don't use all those machines. The barbell is clearly the easiest start and the most versatile tool on the planet. I think it's the best strength training tool on the planet and that's why I always preach barbells. I don't necessarily preach powerlifting, although you wanna compete, that's great, I think it can help you. I don't necessarily preach weightlifting. It's something I don't coach personally, but I do enjoy this sport and I think it's something great. Uh, I don't necessarily preach bodybuilding, but I think the barbell should be the foundation for all of these tools to get yourself faster, look better, get strong. So that's where we're starting. Um, I've used a lot of barbells over time, and I'm not as particular as some. Some people are so angsty about the barbell they use, whether it be the knurling type, the whip type, the company. I don't know if people are into brand names like people do. And I'm an Adidas guy. I'm a Nike guy. I'm a Reebok guy. I think some of that's involved. But for me, uh, it's just experience of how they feel and how durable they are. Uh, and so to start, we've teamed up. Um, the first big purchase is with Sornex. Sornex uh, builds racks mostly. Um, for us, they're building our racks and our cable system. They work with m mostly uh, like military applications, college, and pro sports. So there's tiers, right? There's, there's equipment you can go down the street and buy, and you can probably squat and get away with. It's going to be kind of inexpensive but it's also probably gonna break right then there's like residential stuff and then there's like kind of middle ground I think where a lot of things kind of fit uh, and then there's this top tier level of equipment that is proven through decades of wear and tear and beat from professional athletes powerlifters weightlifters and Sornex not only is Bert a personal friend um, but their equipment their style their design uh, and their innovation has been 
Some I've been a fan of for a long time. And so that's where we're going with our base racks. We went with a half rack. I know I was just talking barbells. Switch that around, we'll talk about that later. We're talking racks, the meat and potatoes of lifting to me is the barbell and the rack. And so we went with half racks for a couple reasons. I think that one, obviously our slogan's good company. So eventually, you know, minding COVID, we want you to be able to train together and use spotters because the one advantage of a cage or a full rack, I think, is that there are safety arms. Other than that, I can't really think of a reason to do use a full cage versus a half rack. A half rack, we're gonna take up a lot less space. We're gonna have more room on our platforms in case people wanna weight lift in front of them and then still squat out of them. So it provides a space to lift. And that's why we got these cool platforms. It provides, provides a space to lift for both our power lifters and our weight lifters without having a full cage here and then an empty platform over here for our weight lifter and power lifter. So now we get more Again, utilizing the same tools for multiple uses. You can clean and jerk, you can snatch, you can deadlift, you can squat, you can do anything out of our things. You can throw a bench in there and bench. Sornex does have great safety arms that we got with our half rack. So although I don't, I'm not a huge fan of dumping weight, I don't think it's the number one um, best way to not injure yourself and not injure the equipment. I think spotters are often safer if the spotters know what they're doing. Uh, we will have safety arms so you can do that. So we got five of those guys. So that's five squat stations, five overhead stations, five places you can do Olympic weightlifting because we got these wood platforms. Um, and then I got one full cage just because, again, I'm not a huge fan of rack pulls, although rack pulls are another use of that uh, because now you have the bars coming out. Even though you can kind of rack pull out of a half rack if you secure it to the ground, which we will, um, I think you first decide what you need in your gym and why. And maybe someone could provide me an answer why they went. And maybe this is where I call out Brandon Campbell or what is it, gym reviews, or Alan Thrall. I, I can't really think of a reason for a rack besides it, it takes up a bigger footprint, right? It takes up more square footage, although you're doing the same task as a half rack. Um, typically, half racks are slightly less expensive, although they're right next to each other in price because the general metal you're doing is the same. I don't know, and so that's clearly why we went with five of them. I went with the full cage because sometimes it looks cool on video. Sometimes you like to lift in the cage so you can dump stuff. But again, the half rack provides everything you may need. Going back to the barbells and the choice, uh, Sorenex is a, a licensed vendor of Texas. Texas is the first barbell I used in most of the competitions I've competed in. Uh, there's still some federations that use it. I think it's a very versatile bar. I think the Texas Power Bar is just kind of like that base good bar. Uh, we're also going to talk to our guy, uh, uh, Chris Duffin, and grab some Kabuki specialty bars um, and Kabuki squawk bars. But deadlift bars, Texas is my favorite. So we've got two Texas deadlift bars. Uh, and a handful, a bunch of Texas Power Bars, which I think is the base, uh, the meat and potatoes. That's it. Some people want to go do fondue. Some people want to go make your own pizza. I want to sit down with a ribeye, some potatoes roasted with some garlic maybe. We can, I mean, it's not like it's bad, you know, it's nice. A ribeye and maybe just some spinach with some butter on it. And that's my Texas Power Bar. You can do everything. You can do everything you need. You could build every single muscle on your body with that deal. Um, and so that's what we went with. Now, we will expand. We're gonna get all the safety squat bars, et cetera, et cetera, to get you uh, feeling real, real freaking naughty in here and have some options. But that's the basis of the gym. Uh, wood platforms for the weightlifting. We have deadlift platforms that will be all rubber. Game on. You basically have a gym. If you're building a home gym, I think that's all you need. Uh, any isolation stuff you want to do, you could probably do with bands that are really, really cheap. We'll obviously have those. They're like $20. Um, our next big purchase was dumbbells. Uh, I think doing some unilateral movements, whether you're a weightlifter, powerlifter, bodybuilder, clearly a bodybuilder, uh, or, or strength and conditioning, you want to just be an athlete, or you just want to feel good, be a normal person, dumbbells are the second best. So to start, we went five to 50 in two and a half increments, and then we went five, uh, 50 to 100 in um, five pound increments. Uh, I know some dudes are out there chucking 250 pound dumbbells. A lot of the equipment we're buying is our base level of equipment that will help the majority of people. And then also we're going to cater where our budget goes to improve our business, to improve the environment, to improve the gym, the good company, um, based on the type of clientele that shows up. Um, I, I imagine we have competitive power lifters. I imagine we have some competitive weight lifters. I imagine we have casual weight lifters and power lifters. And I imagine we'll just have a lot of general population that just wants to squat, maybe catch a pump and get out. So we're going to slowly the 
investment of the next equipment phase, which will be like 2021, will be based on who shows up and what, what our community wants. Um, we're here to please the community. This is a barbell strength based place. I'm not gonna buy a bunch of shake weights if they ask that, but we can start to tweak or cater and lean one way. Um, so if we have 10 guys that are crushing 200 pound dumbbells, I'll buy some 200 pound dumbbells, but that's just unlikely. So, you know, even me, who I've, I've handled 150 pound dumbbells, I can get all my work done using the barbell, my overhead work, my bench press work, handling the heavier loads, and then do higher reps in, in, in an incline or shoulder press with the dumbbell. And that's how I like to train, that's how others. Again, I said we got the sore next cable coming in for all the isolation stuff. So any unilateral or isolation moves you want, it will be in that other room and we'll have dumbbells in the cables, full stack setup. Uh, obviously, we're a big operation here. We're on 6,000 square foot, uh, and we want many people to be able to reach many different types of goals here. A cables or even dumbbells might not be the piece of equipment you choose to invest your money in when you build a home gym. Um, or if you build just a weightlifting gym, perhaps. You know, if you're just catering to weightlifters or you just clean and jerk and snatch, you might not need dumbbells, but I think they're, you know, in that, you know, 1B tier of what is useful for majority of people. Um, again, because we might have some gen pop, or I think even weightlifters, powerlifters definitely can benefit, definitely bodybuilders can, or the, those that chase aesthetics, is we have a full plate loaded hammer strength gym coming in. And that'll also be in the B room. We call it the B room, it's the smaller room. Uh, it'll kind of be our aesthetic room, uh, accessory room, bodybuilding room, whatever you want to call it. But uh, again, getting most bang for your buck, which I think is something that you can just learn over time with budgeting, uh, even how you live your life, your food, you go shop in bulk, you buy your chicken and your you know, paper towels in bulk versus buying one roll, you'll save a little bit of money. It's same budgeting with the type of equipment and how you train. So all our hammer strength equipment, uh, we got a, a vertical pull, we got a vertical, oh, that's horizontal. Cut it, dude. Vertical pull, vertical push, horizontal pull, horizontal push. You're gonna make me look dumb on the internet. Uh, which again, works, a compound movement works a lot of muscle groups, uh, but that's the basis of all upper body. We're working on getting a belt squat, as you guys may know or may not know, a lot of things are sold out on the internet, but I think a belt squat and a leg press are definitely in our future. Uh, again, a good mass leg builder works a lot of muscles in your legs, obviously very similar to a squat, um, but some people may not like to squat. They might not like to put the bar on the back, et cetera, et cetera, and it works for a majority of people. The belt squat, I think, is one of the greatest inventions. Uh, not that it hasn't been around a long time, but the application of it or how they built the machines has been uh, innovated over the last 10 years, um, and it's a lot more usable for more people. Past that, a lot of it then starts becomes bells and whistles. So we will have a full uh, over 50 foot of turf, um, probably about 15 feet wide, so multiple people can get on there. Uh, whether you want to do sleds, you want to do mobility, you want to do, if you're into some kind of calisthenics or gymnastics, uh, you can roll um, utility benches over and do your hip thrusts. You can do them on the platform too, but obviously you just need free space. You don't need a squat rack for that, depending on how busy places, et cetera, et cetera. Um, turf in general, I think adds a nice touch um, to give a variety of athletes, a variety of people, a chance to move, warm up, and move differently. Farmers walks, uh, lunges, et cetera, et cetera, are much easier to do than bumping your knee on our very hard, yet very sexy concrete that we worked tireless hours to make pretty. Um, sleds, et cetera, whether you wanna push them, pull them, sprint with them, uh, will all be usable in the 50, 50 foot plus turf. It's probably closer to 70 foot. Uh, another area we want to build upon is kind of a cardiovascular section. We have an assault bike, and again, we have the turf. If you want to get your heart rate pumping, if you're cutting, if you're, uh, you know, whether you want to compete in bodybuilding or just cutting up for the summer, uh, or just want to train that heart to be a little bit healthier, which is kind of the direction I'm heading as we age over here. Graybeard, they'll call me Silent Mike the Graybeard, Mugatu. Um, but so we have an assault bike to start with there and all the sleds, and eventually we're going to build that up. Again, it, it depends on the clientele and how we want to build it. Now, when choosing the style of the company of these equipments, uh, we went with companies that I've either worked with previously, I know the owners, or just market research, and you find what is best suited um, for what you want to do. And because we're going to be a gym that's open to the public, uh, the chances are our equipment is going to take more wear and tear, so we are going to spend a little bit extra dollar so that this equipment can take that beating. If you're training just by yourself, 
and it's only you a couple times a week, the chances are that barbell, that, that squat rack, aren't gonna take the poundage and the, the, the foot traffic, the mileage, uh, that something would in here. So you might be able to go away with a little bit more budget company, but the main companies we're looking at, Sornex, Rogue, uh, we got a couple utility benches coming in from Rep Fitness um, that are kind of fat pad, really high quality metal. These platforms themselves, I think were made by Hammer Strength, although we got them on auction. Uh, the company's called Powerlift, I believe Hammer Strength made them back in the day, which is a greater company of Life Fitness, which is one of the you know, if Ford and Chevy are the car companies, Life Fitness is one of the uh, uh, exercise manufacturers that have been around. Uh, Sornex, again, I mentioned, who's like the bread and butter, the steak and potatoes, the beer and pretzel. We can keep going. The ketchup and hot dog glizzies uh, of strength and conditioning. Um, so I'm so really excited. Umax is our dumbbell company. It's another big name brand. Um, and again, the quality of the equipment really depends on the usage and the mileage that they can maybe take. And so we just went for the upper echelon because uh, we plan to be around a long time. We plan a lot of people to smash a lot of weights here. So we want to have the highest quality equipment for y'all. What's our time at? Long? 17. Oh, that's real long, man. You can chop it all up. Yeah. Just cut her out. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just a thought into how I kind of chose the equipment. What you do, what your goals are, can kind of cater and choose what you decide to purchase, uh, whether it be company, um, manufacturer, or the equipment itself. You choose, you know, squat rack versus half rack versus mono lift, which is something we're looking into getting as well for our big old squatting boys. Um, and it can be very uh, tailored and individualized for you. Uh, but that's where we're starting. We're really excited to give you a full tour here. Hopefully in, you know, three weeks while we'll this whole thing's set up and you guys get a full video. New video once a week. I appreciate you, man. Be sure to give this thing a thumbs up, share with your friends. Comment below who you want me to, you know, say a polarizing comment to to start some YouTube feud because I feel like that's all we need. There's a little drama in our lives. I appreciate you. Silent Mike. I'm out of here.